Welcome back to another vintage video. Today I'm playing Bizarre once again. If you want to see a full deck tech for this video, you can go to the, back to my first video, and I'll put a link in the description for that. I made a slight change to this compared to the last time. I took two of the oofs that were main, put them to the side for the fourth Stitcher Supplier and the third Bloodgast. In the side, I removed the Archive Traps as much as I think they're okay against Doomsday. They don't come in against anything else. Against Doomsday, I figure I can just try to kill them. So the two oofs replaced that, and I put one Alpine Moon. This can name Tabernacle, Bazaar of Baghdad, Urza Saga, Mishra's Workshop, etc. Notably, Alpine Moon is one-sided. It only affects lands that your opponents control, so if I name Bazaar of Baghdad, it turns off my opponent, but not my own. So I think this is a reasonable sideboard card. I've seen it in lists before, and I'm going to try it out. Nothing else notable to talk about here. Let's just jump right into the games. Here we go in round one. I have won the die roll, that's always nice. This hand is a fantastic keep, nothing to talk about really. If we hit a root wall off of this bizarre activation, we can get Vengevine in. Oh, there it is. So Vengevine, root walla, Ogak. Cast that. Cast hollow one, here comes Vengevine. Attack. And actually drawing the second mox in here, I can play oof. This is a rather disgusting start. So the opponent is playing it out. They're bolting the oof. That makes sense. Here come Moxen. Recall from hand's pretty good. On this next turn, I think I'm going to wasteland their Volk. I'll just try to keep them off of uh, as much mana as I possibly can. First, I'm going to activate. That will give me four cards in the graveyard besides Hogak, and then three creatures can convoke the Hogak. Otherwise, I'm attacking for four, eight, and I activate, so it'd be 11. This is actually a two-turn clock without Hogak. I've actually just talked myself into not convoking the Hogak. I'm going to activate Bazaar first. Okay, I'll just throw these away. I will Wasteland their Volcanic Island. I'll activate the Root Walla just for heads up, and go to combat. They have the Lotus. Okay, so they have the Underworld Breach. Question is if they have a, the Brain Freeze. This actually might get the Brain Freeze. So I think they actually have it. Very, very strong start by me, but also an extremely start, strong start from the opponent. It was very lucky of them to have the Bolt. I'm just going to look at their deck a little bit. So they do have Tinker. That's not a surprise, but it's good to know. They'll probably bring in a Sphinx. But we also know that they're doing the Underworld Breach thing going through the graveyard. So after this resolves, I'm going to concede. Okay, they've just switched into milling me, so I've seen enough. They're a Tinker deck. There's a Narset in there. Only the one Lightning Bolt out of those 19 cards, at least. All right, let's get in the sideboard. So Besaidu definitely comes in. These come in. I think I bring in the Moon because they'll likely side in a tabernacle. The edict comes in because they'll probably have Sphinx. I'll do something similar to what I did last time and just trim on the Stitchers and the Hogax and the Bloodgasts. Something like this. Bring these in and we'll try it like that. I could have sided in Leyline of the Void because they are Underworld Breach, but I don't think that's what I want to do here. This is a mulligan. This is also a mulligan. It doesn't really go anywhere. I can play the Shaman and that's about it. This is the best hand so far. Now I want to keep the land, I want to keep the Lotus, Shaman, Endurance. I think it's Hollow One, actually, because we don't have the Bazaar. As tempting as it is to keep the Strip Mine, I am playing a game with mana here instead of the Bazaar, so I'm going to just put the Strip Mine away. So I'm going to play the Shaman. I don't have Basic Forest. I think Bayou is the get, so I can activate Shaman in both ways. And now I'm holding up casting Endurance off a of Black Lotus, or I could pitch cast either one of these. Opponent kept 7, so that's scary. There's a Saga from the opponent. I can go to my turn and hard cast Force of Vigor. I think I prefer that over pitch casting, unless I need to do it now. Okay, they're abrading, I have no response. Hollow one. I'm going to go to their upkeep and cast the Force of Vigor at that point. They're not untapping into any blue mana. I'll take out the red and the saga. And that just resolved. They have another saga, okay. Well, that seems pretty good. 
Not going to lie, I don't feel very good about this game. But they're not playing any lands. So that is encouraging. That's a good draw. So I can just throw the Endurance in the graveyard with whatever else. And then cast the Hollow one. Bayou lets me pay for this if they play a Tabernacle. Hopefully they just keep missing land drops. Nope. Probably the scariest land drop. Although it doesn't make colored mana, and since they just missed land drops for two turns, they may just miss again, and then they can't even make constructs. So double bizarre is pretty nice. Just a bunch of lands. Let's see what they got. They're just passing again, so they're not going to get any constructs out of that thing. Okay. I could have activated Bizarre on my upkeep there. I think that was actually a mistake that I didn't do it. Um, let's just do these before combat. I can Convoke Hogak this turn. So I'm doing this before combat just in case I hit Avenge Bind. No luck. But we are Convoking Hogak this turn. That will put Lethal on the board, I'm pretty sure. Stop in my main phase. Cast this. There's still going to be a couple lands in there. Fine. And let's see if they can combo me out. They're losing their Urza Saga, but it does tap for a mana here. They're not conceding, so possibly a Tinker. Yep. So we have plenty of outs to that. Oh, they went for Citadel at 12. Interesting choice. Maybe they have a top in hand. Citadel can easily brick. Brainstorm makes it a little easier on them, but they could easily just hit a land on top. I'm going to have six. I have nothing to counter with. Okay, Vamp. They're probably putting top on top. Or it's Breach. Do they have the Brain Freeze? Wow, absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. Okay, they're time walking, so... I'm not sure, okay, why, why did they even time walk? I'm not sure it really matters if they just have that. Yeah, that's, that's that. Um, is they're just going to brain freeze themselves and then brain freeze me and that's that. That's vintage. On to the next round. All right, we just got paired into round two. This hand is not exactly blazing out the gate. We can definitely do better. This hand is slightly better. I'm going to keep. I can play Chalice on zero and I can play a Stitcher on turn one. Once upon a time can find a Bazaar and that would be fantastic. The put back here is difficult. I think it's one of the root wallas. Lotus Petal. Dark Ritual. We're just getting comboed out on turn one. I will cry. And it indeed looks like we are. Alistrade Spy into play. It's this Oops All Spells deck again. Played against that last time as well. Um, Let them just... Do it so I can see their deck. I don't have a main deck Endurance, so Once Upon a Time isn't going to save me or anything. They have blue cards, Force of Wills. They have a Char Belcher, but only one. A couple Chain of Vapors, Tinker, I guess. For, oh no, they do have multiple Char Belchers. Looks like two. Yeah, cool. I do not enjoy playing against this deck. Collector Oofs, Pyroblasts. Now, last time we saw that twice there, they they played the one that has that you have to activate and then just hung it out there in play but i still don't think that this member comes in it's a little weird so we're making room for ley lines and everything need several more cuts still that would do it i'll just try it like this and we have a ley line hand we have a force of vigor hand we have a bizarre hand this is a pretty good seven there's a lot of lands but it's okay keep hopefully we see a deep mulligan from the opponent they're at six they're at five they're at four they kept four I'll put in Leyline, and I will spin Bazaar. Pretty decent little hit. I will get rid of one of the fetch lands. Dryadarber is my pitch card for Force of Vigor. Land tapped. I could wasteland them. That seems pretty good. I wanted to activate Rootwalla here, so I'd play Mox land, but just they were on a four card hand, so just putting the guns to them as much as possible seems pretty good. And I'm actually just not going to activate Bazaar. I could discard the jet, but I, I am just going to hold because I still want to play land Mox and be able to activate my Root Walla and hold up Force. Okay, repeat of last turn, a Ley Line. Okay, I can safely discard that. I could cast it eventually, but I don't think that's 
coming anytime soon. So I just drew two of my fetchables so the fetch can go away, the ley line can go away. I want to keep the red one so I can activate the blazing root walla. I suppose it, it is just the bayou. So I have this, just activate this heads up, go to attacks. They are just passing. If I draw a land here, I will just play it out. Okay, so that's actually not a green land, so that doesn't help me activate root walla. So I am going to just activate bazaar and put that in the graveyard. There's a venge bind for later. Keeping another force of vigor around I think doesn't matter. That came. We're definitely not completely safe. Okay, they played that tapped. A lotus petal doesn't really help. I'm gonna activate. There's an oof. I can play that now off of the petal because Mox Jet would just get turned off anyway. This will require me to put down my Force of Vigor, but having an oof in play, I think, is better than Force of Vigor. If I keep Mox Jet and Lotus Petal, I can still activate Ruwala this turn. I'm attacking for four, and then next turn attacking for six. That is a two turn clock with the oof, so I'm going to do it like that. So make sure I float with the jet before the oof turns it off. And hopefully they don't have a uh, answer delay line and a dark ritual into the spy, which that would have won through Force of Vigor anyway. Okay, so now they know what we're on. They are likely a ley line deck, so Besaidu can come in. I'm not sure if any of these other cards should come in. I think just cutting Hogak for that makes sense, and we'll just play that a game like what we just did. Just hopefully we get some hollow ones and stuff and beat them down quicker. I don't think Alpine Moon has really any context. Yeah, they can't have any natural lands in their deck, so Alpine Moon would not do anything. This hand does nothing on turn zero, so I can't keep it. Hopefully we see them mulligan a bunch again. They mulligan to six, and so are we. I have Endurance, which that actually is pretty great. Um, once upon a time, could find it a bazaar or another land and slowly get to casting oof waste this is this is okay i'm not gonna go real deep when i have the endurance although they are like a force of will deck they went to five i can try to chase a ley line i'm gonna keep the endurance hand and i'm gonna put back the second oof as much as i'd love like a ley line and endurance um you gotta take what you can get they went to four so th their likelihood of having like force of will backup is uh dwindling they kept four and they have a lotus hand okay hopefully they just spend their whole hand to try to jam yep now if their final card in hand is oh what is this they're taking the initiative okay um i can beat the initiative my deck is pretty good at hacking although i didn't side in my creature removal that's an interesting pivot all right let's find a bazaar found one let's go venge vine root walla and Maybe we're past the point of wanting Endurance. Endurance can get in there later. I am a million years from casting Pyroblast. I need a, the proper land for that. So I'm going to get rid of that, actually. Here comes Vengevine. Yes, the opponent can block the Vengevine to maintain the initiative, but they lose their creature. They did not block. I get my Swamp. This is why this is in the deck, by the way. Among other reasons, like Blood Moon or whatever. If they try to combo off their two card hand, now one card hand would have to beat an endurance. If they attack, I have a free block. I am going to just forge up. So if I make the root walla a 3-3, three, three, um, okay, they're just conceding. Yeah, that makes sense. The the four power creatures against that thing just destroy it. I, I That's an interesting pivot from them, but against this deck, I don't feel threatened at all. The dedicated initiative decks are scary, but that, just one creature? No way. They... I think that's a lot better against like the spell-based combo decks or something if you can try to just beat them down, but... Alright, we won round two, let's go to round three. Hey everyone, we're a couple rounds into the league, and if you made it this far, please consider liking and subscribing, and leave a comment and let me know how I'm doing. I'd really appreciate it, and I will absolutely read all of the comments. Let's get back into the league. Alright, we just got paired into round three. This hand isn't going anywhere, we have no colored sources, no bizarre, easy mulligan. This hand is a little more interesting, but... It's still kind of not going anywhere. I have Hardcast Force of Vigor, but I'm on the draw, so I'm going to go to 5. This is going to be my keep. I'm not going to go to 4. I have the Stitcher to fuel the Hogak, so I'm going to keep the Hogak. I think in this spot I'm actually going to throw away the Vengevine. 
The other throwaway I think is going to be the Mox Jet. I can keep the Death Rate so that I can pitch it to Force of Vigor. Looking like a blue deck. Okay, and oof. So th this is actually totally okay. Hopefully they don't have counter magic for my Stitcher. I could just Wasteland them here, but I'm going to save the Wasteland and just try to get the Stitcher in. I think the land I get here is the Bayou. It's in. And we hit a Hogak in the graveyard. That's pretty good. It's a pass. So it's some sort of mirror. I think they're on the Squee and everything version. If they play a Bazaar, I have the Wasteland for that. And that will actually put a fifth card in the graveyard. So then I can play the Shaman and Convoke my Hogak from hand. Okay, they might Wasteland me here. They are. I'm okay with that. I think in this spot, if they did attack, I wouldn't have blocked, actually, because I want to be able to Convoke. So I can't actually cast the Shaman now, but I found that. Okay. I think that's an easy activation. Okay, I found a Hollow one that doesn't help Convoke Hogak, but it is something I can play. I'm going to keep my Wasteland for when they find their Bazaar. I'm going to get the Hogak away because I can just cast out the Graveyard. One of the Shamans. I think Force of Vigor is not important for this matchup. So that is the other thing I can throw away. I'm still not going to attack with the Stitcher because I want to be able to convoke my Hogak. They have the Force. Okay, it's two for one. If they're afraid of the Hollow One, that makes me feel kind of good. They only have one card in hand. If they just drop a Bazaar into play, that would be unfortunate. Okay, a Badlands. So I have Bazaar activating every turn and they don't. I feel really good here. There's a Vengevine. I'm definitely activating Bazaar. Okay, so the Badlands casts my Shaman. That is definitely what I want to do with this turn. Let's get that in play. Luckily, they didn't have the misstep. So let's exile the lands in case they find their own shaman. And the other stuff doesn't really matter. Let's get this in here. Okay, they're just conceding that. Game two. It's the pseudo mirror. So this pile of stuff comes in. The collector oofs can come out. The Endurance for sure comes in. The Alpine Moon comes in. This is a lot of sideboard. The Chalice can come out. The Blood Ghasts are the most awkward thing if I have gra if they have Grave Hate. Death Ridge Shaman functions as Grave Hate, so I think I keep that. Possibly the Dryad Arbor could come out. They're probably going to side out their own oofs so I can keep my Mox in and everything. I think it's just the Stitchers as usual. The question is, do I want Besaju? Probably it hits their Bazaar, it hits their Ley Lines. Just go down to one and one on these. Although a Resolved Hogak really, I think, is a very good way to win against that deck. Oh, why can't I grab this? Go. I am looking at this Arbor because I'm bringing in a Besaju. Let's keep two Hogaks. And I'm not going to bring in Pyroblast, I just, I'm already bringing in so many cards. They are a force deck, but it's more for being able to counter Tinker or whatever. This hand is very reasonable. I have the Strip Mine and the Wasteland. However, I don't have anything if they do have a Ley Line. They kept seven, so I'm tempted to just go to six. Because keeping seven probably means they either have the ley line or they just have a really good fast bizarre hand i'm gonna go to six even though this is pretty reasonable okay i found a ley line i'm keeping putting back the second bizarre is an option also putting back the shaman i can't cast either of these currently i think i'm gonna put back the shaman yep they have a ley line and so do i now once we find a green source we have beside you okay just land go i like to see that Okay, there's a black source. I can at least play the Stitcher, even though the three cards milled will just go into the void. I think that's what I want to do. I need to get a mana source into play. This at least gets a creature into play. Let's see what we mill. Ooh, both Hogax gone. Unfortunate. Do they have a Wasteland? I'm glad I found that basic. Fetching. They are casting Cleansing Wildfire on my Swamp. So unfortunately, this is my only basic. So this is just straight up destroy, and that's it. Yeah, just verify. Yep, that's an interesting sideboard card from them. Makes sense, it cantrips. Okay, I found an another wasteland. I, I think I'm going to take them off of their volcanic island, since I have the other one for the if, when they play a bazaar or whatever. I'm going to get in for one. Okay, they have another land, unfortunately. Green. Okay, they have a shaman, but we have no graveyards. Okay, 
Black Lotus casts my Besaidu, or well, activates it rather. I'm definitely doing that. And I kind of want to Wasteland their Trop. I'm considering if I want to do this now so that the Wasteland goes in the Void and then they can't use Deathrite to make mana from it. I, I think I am going to do that, yep. And then I'm going to just wait. But yeah, they have another Trop. I could attack, but that'll fuel their Deathrite Shaman. Although it's only, or not until their turn since it's summoning sick. I am just not going to attack. Maybe if they manage to get a Vengevine in or something, like if they clear my ley line, I don't know what I was saying. They're passing the turn. Okay, I found a hollow one, so I can get that in. They're going to waste my Bazaar, obviously, but that is a pretty good one. Okay, I really would like my second Bazaar for next turn, but they already have double Wasteland. If they don't have Force of Will for hollow one, then we're looking okay. Yeah, I need to get hollow one on the stack. It resolved. They might have a removal spell. Once again, I'm not attacking with Stitcher here. Maybe next turn. Yep, they're wasting that. Totally expected. They can gain two life by eating my hollow one with their death right. That's pretty much free for them. And they are doing that. Yet another wasteland. Yeah, the second bazaar was never going to get there. So they haven't fired off a removal spell on hollow one yet. A ley line, that's not a good draw. I'm still just going to hold the Stitcher back. I'm a little afraid of them eating a land to make red and then just jamming Minskin Boo. I'm not sure if they have that. Looks like it's going to do damage. All right, we did damage. Old Breacher in the end step. That's scary. Okay, they're making mana. See if my fears are realized. They made red. Oh no, that, that's exactly what I was afraid of. So I think now that since both my Hogax are in the void, there is little hope of getting over Boo. I will block with Stitcher now. Vengevine in the graveyard. Wasteland a little too late to the party. I think there's very little hope. If I attack, they'll just get a new Boo next turn. I'm going to just concede this game. Okay, so yep, we saw Minsk and Boo. Like I was mentioning, Hogak is kind of my way of getting over the Boo. That thing just gets so big so quickly. I have two turns to get a Hogak and attack because it'll be bigger than the 4-4 four four and the 7-7. Seven seven. After that, it's too much. So Hogak's going to come back in. I think the cut here, the cut here, I'm looking at one of the root wallas. The Vengevines and Hollow Ones are way too important to cut. Deathrite Shaman being Grave Hate is way too important. Also, just a 1-2 body is not bad. So just to force a Vigor. Let's just try like this. We get to be on the play now. That is huge. We have a Ley Line. We have Force of Vigor. This is pretty good. No Bizarre, but otherwise, it's great. They also kept seven. They do not have a ley line. Seems good to me. So I think I'm going to just play the shaman. I'm going to hold Black Lotus. They have the misstep. Yuck. I, yeah, I'm not casting anything with Black Lotus right now, so I'm just going to hold it. We could potentially hard cast a Vengevine next turn or any subsequent turns. Okay, they have some mocks in. I have the Force of Vigor. They have the Recall. Looks like a pretty good hand from them. They have their own shaman. All right, let's see a bazaar off the top. Come on. Alpine moon. Not bad. Not too bad. I think I just play that name bazaar. Keep them off of their bazaar. Unless they force this. Okay. I could also name wasteland. But I think if they get their bazaar going, that's way scarier. I actually haven't even seen a bazaar out of them yet, but I'm sure they have it. Let's think about this. I've seen everything you would expect except for... The bizarre. Maybe they're just some sort of blue-green mid-range or well rug. Maybe they don't even have bizarre. I think I think I'm gonna name Wasteland actually. I haven't seen any root wallas. Yeah. Um. So I could just cast root walla off of the lotus, but then that puts me off of vigor. So I don't like that. They have a time walk. Now I could force a vigor their mocks. So they can't untap and just jam Minskin Boo. I'm not sure that Force of Vigor is getting any better here. I really hate to lose my Root Walla, but it feels a little bit necessary. If I was going to do that, I probably should have done it last turn. They have EI. Yeah, I'm thinking that they're actually not a Bizarre deck anymore. I don't hate the Ley Line because it actually um, it stifles their death rate a little bit. They have to use my Graveyard. But I would have sided a little bit differently if I had realized this wasn't... A bizarre deck. They have another shaman. 
Okay, we need to find a bazaar off the top. Strip mine, that really doesn't help. I can just hard cast the hollow one. That's kind of the best thing I can do. And now if they untap and just jam Minsk and Boo, or once again, just in the trash. Brennan 6, okay. That's, uh... That's not as scary as Minsk and Boo for sure. They're bolting and then minusing Ren on Hollow One. It's not looking good. Not at all. I completely misread what kind of Death Raid Shaman deck that they are. I blame all these people playing bizarre decks with Force of Will and all that stuff. Looks just like it. Yeah, Mox Jet's not helping at all. Another Shaman from them. Another Yak. Okay, they go after the colored source, that makes sense. So we just really need to top deck a bazaar and we need to hit exceptionally well. Vengevine ain't it. Not dead yet, but it's not looking good. Okay. Alright, I'm still kind of in this if I draw bazaar and hit really well. That's, like, once again, not it. I have one more turn. If they have any sort of hasty damage, that's GG. They can put me to two on board. Dak Faden. Yeah, I completely misread what they were doing. Wish I could redo sideboarding and not side in the ley lines. Bring in the pyroblasts. Maybe keep bloodgasts. Or just keep a couple stitchers. This is my last draw step, no matter what happens. And what have we got? Yeah, a ley line in hand. That's awesome. Yep, good game. Let's go to round four. All right, we just got paired into round four. I recognize this username. This player plays green hate bear decks a lot of the time. Just hopefully, if we can find a really fast hand, we can just beat them down before they get truly developed. So I'm definitely mulling to a quick, bizarre hand, if possible. Okay. So this is a, a very reasonable 7. This gets a Vengevine, Rootwell, Hollow One all into play on turn 1. Seems great to me. Definitely going to keep. Especially knowing what kind of decks they normally play. They have a good hand too, it looks like. Okay. Black Lotus, Mox Ruby. If this is a turn 1 Minsk and Boo, that is terrifying. It is not. Okay, thank goodness. I can deal with a Goyf, and I can deal with a Collector Oof. Minsk and Boo would have been horrific. And they turned their own Mox Ruby off, so they're still three land drops away from casting a Minsk and Boo at this point. Okay, we found a Once Upon a Time. I'm casting that. I think I want the Taiga, actually, so that I can pump my Root Walla on subsequent turns. It's also tempting to take the Wasteland, and then on subsequent turns I can Wasteland Strip Mine and just keep bashing their lands while I activate Bazaar. Both of those options seem pretty reasonable. The Bloodgast is also pretty reasonable. There's a lot of good choices here. I'm going to take the Taiga, and here we go. Vengevine, Rootwalla, and the Bloodgast will go in the graveyard. It grows their Goyf by one. So that actually, considering that, maybe I should have just pitched the Jet, because there's already an artifact. Get Vengevine in. So that thing's a 3-4. So if they fetch, it becomes a 4-5. So I actually don't have attacks, but we have a good board. Two Tigers from the opponent. They have a Scavenging Ooze. They luckily don't have a mana to eat my Bloodgast immediately. When I play a land, Bloodgast is going to come out of the graveyard and Tarmogoyf will become a 3-4. They likely don't have any sort of free thing to put in their graveyard, so I will have attacks. Root Wall is a good pickup. What I think I'm going to do is play Wasteland. I'm going to waste their Taiga and then just attack with my four power creatures. They could double block and then Tarmogoyf could... Tarmogoyf would just trade with Vengevine. Is that how that works? Is this one of those situations where it Vengevine going to the graveyard would grow it? They, they should die at the same time. If you know the answer to that question, let me know if we don't see it happen. I'm not messing around, I'm just going to waste them right now. And I'm going to attack before I activate Bazaar. Despite the fact that I could possibly hit, like, another Vengevine, I don't want to end up in a situation where I have to, like, discard something that grows their Goyf. Is it 3-4? Looks like they're just chumping with Oof. This lets me play my Stitcher. Once again, that might grow their Tarmogoyf, but I think I just go way wider than them, and that's okay. So Rootwalla. Okay, Hogak, I think I can Convoke this turn. And then I, th I think I'm done Wasteland and Strip Mining them. Let's get Root Wallet in. I can definitely invoke Hogak. 
Yeah, and I do, in fact, need to cast the Stitcher in order to do that. I can try to take them off of Instant. Get this in. You, you. They have an artifact, so Instant for sure. I, they have a creature, so it's only Instant. Is this thing... Yeah, this thing eats creatures, so hang on, undo. I'm going to eat the Stitcher in the graveyard. The Blood Gas can come out but maybe i'll just eat my blood gas my board is big enough just to try to reduce the goif as much as possible and reduce their scavenging news from eating i'm really not sure they could beat this board at this point i'm not even very afraid of a minskin boost since i have the hogak in play they play a mox so they can grow the ooze to a 3-3 but that would make their goif a 2-3 another hogak i am just gonna attack and i'm certainly attacking with blood gas if they block it that's totally fine. I think just this is my attack. 8, 9, 10, 14, 18. If I just crunch with the other things. So if they block here and here, they still take 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I can't quite lethal them if they make these blocks, but they're just losing both of their creatures. I think those are the blocks they have to make in order to survive. They're besaging something. The hollow one. Okay. Uh, I don't have a response to that. I'll go get a land. Dried Arbor. Just another attacker. Yeah. They're just putting Goyf in front of the Bloodgast. Going to three. I'll go to my second main phase. I think I'll just play the Taiga and not show them the second Bazaar. Get my Bloodgast back in play. And just pass. Something crazy like Anger of the Gods would sweep up a lot of this board. Everything but Hogak. But then they still have to deal with the Hogak. They only have one card in hand. I think we have this match in the bag for this game they just played a land they're they're not conceding <laughs> okay yeah they're they're just super dead but they don't want to concede they're playing it out good for you all right i'm just gonna go to attacks and just brunch with everything yeah okay so they are some sort of like green red bears thing collector oof they have their own oofs but they might bring them out they do have mocks in and everything but i'm not sure that i want the oofs creature removal obviously comes in they're probably a wasteland deck so alpine moon is reasonable they probably have ley line of the void so the besager probably comes in that comes in almost every time arbor can come out a couple stitchers the hogak the chalice i think is probably not really good in this matchup it's okay it can really, it can slow them down. I'm not on the play. I'll, I'll bring it in on the play if we get a game three. Endurance can function as just something to get in the red zone. Maybe I just, maybe I trim a ghast and keep a couple stitchers to try to get Hogak quickly. Maybe I just trim the oofs and keep the stitchers in. I think I like that more. How about three stitchers and keep all three Hogaks? Because Hogak is going to be my ticket to just beating their creatures, even if they're like four, five. 4-5 Tarmogoy, 4-4 four, four, Boo token. This hand is not blazing fast. There's no bizarre, but once upon a time could find it. I have the turn one Stitcher, and then I have the Pebble to turn one Dismember. I could Dismember on any subsequent turn. Um, despite there being no bizarre, I'm going to keep it and hope once upon a time finds it. They also kept seven, and they are also once upon a timing. They reveal a Tarmogoy. They do have land Mox. Will there be a Goyf? We can dismember that. Yep. I think dismember is, it's better used on like a boo token if we get to that point. Okay, let's draw. We drew a death right. That's not bad at all. Once upon a time, find me bizarre. We did find one. Let's go. So I'm going to activate kind of a crappy activation. So there's already an instant in the graveyard, so this doesn't grow the goif, but some of this other stuff will. My shaman can keep the goif under control by eating creatures and lands. Wasteland, I, I really want to keep. I want to keep all of these cards. What I think I'm going to do, I'm actually going to get rid of the Stitcher. I'm going to keep the backup bazaar. I'm going to play the hollow one. I'm going to play the pedal, play the hollow one, keep the pedal in play just in case they jam a tabernacle so I can pay for it for one turn. As much as I want to be able to wasteland them, I'm going to throw that in there. Here comes hollow one, Here comes lotus pedal. And like I said, I'm going to save this to take pay for a tabernacle if they do play one i don't want to lose my 4-4 four four for no reason it does block tarmogoyf okay they're force of vigoring me and they did this in my main phase that was a mess 
a big mistake by them. So I can sack this for black. Say okay. And then I can cast my shaman. They should have done that on my end step for sure. What did they pitch? Elvish spirit guide. Okay. So this thing's now a 4-5. Dismember still gets it. Shaman can eat the land in the graveyard if they don't fetch. Okay, they have wasteland. That's okay. This is why I kept the backup bizarre. So yeah, that's a 4-5. If they have an instant speed spell, it would not grow it. And like a Besaju would also not grow it. Spirit Guide goes to Exile. There's already a creature in there. Yeah, I think I'm safe to dismember Tarmogoyf off of my death rate activation. I need their Wasteland. I'm gonna make green because it doesn't matter. I'm paying life. This is a 4-5, yes. Or I make a huge mistake here. Put that in the garbage. They didn't make a land drop or anything. They have two cards in hand. Um, So another dismember or the another bizarre. I think getting two bizarres just Rankin kind of sounds like the best thing here. Hopefully they just play like collector oof here or something. They okay, just nothing. They're probably drawing like their four drops. Last time I played against them, they had some crazy six drop even. They were they had big big stuff. Okay, so yeah, bizarre puts that in the graveyard. That's obvious. I'll activate first in case I hit a blood gas. So when I play the second bizarre, that's pretty good. Get root walla in, and you've heard of first bizarre. How about second bizarre? Ooh, a hogak that can come in right now and that gets my venge vine in so once again they have creature instant so if i can eat the lands that takes me off of making mana with shaman i'll eat the artifacts i'll eat the enchantment can't eat all of the creatures there's one i guess like stitcher they have one too but that keeps ooze from getting too big Got to think about these little things. They are endurancing me. They're evoking the endurance to stop Vengevine. I am totally okay with that. That That's fine. That's like a two for zero. Don't you love how Hogak doesn't pass priority if you just cast it? It's great. Yes, I'm going to use the ability, but no, it doesn't show up. <laughs> okay. Passing the turn with a Hogak in play. They just two for zeroed themselves. They've done nothing for two turns. I think we win this game. Now I'm going to do the bizarre activations in my upkeep. There's a bench vine. And there's a root walla. Opponent is probably rolling their eyes. Let's draw something castable. Okay. Not castable, but it's fine. Now I will just attack with shaman. Or is there a land in here? No, there's not. So I'm just going to get in. Okay, lethal on the board. I'm not sure what they could even draw. Balance or something. But that would just leave me with two bizarres in play. Okay, we got it. We got it. And we get the 3-2 in round 5. Let's go. All right. We just got paired into round five. Let's try to get this positive record. This hand is pretty good. There's no hate, but it's a very fast Benjamin Hollow one, Root Walla. I'm going to keep. Hopefully we don't get turn one. Opponent is on shops. Let's see if they have a sphere. They do. Okay. So with the sphere in play, <clears throat> I would really like to find a mana source here, a land. Okay, we found a lotus. I can't cast that out so i can cast my hollow one but that's only one creature or the venge vine my bizarre needs to hit another hollow one hopefully i can find a land and then i can play out my lotus and then cast um stitcher off of the lotus next turn so double venge vine in there in the wings ready to go for next turn I think I'm going to discard the Mox Emerald here. The Root Wallas just don't get cast because of the Sphere. The Lotus is my way out from under the Sphere. So I'm going to discard the Emerald, cast the Hollow One, and that's all I can do this turn. A Land Drop will get me all of these things into play. A Needle. Okay, they're going to Needle Bazaar, I'm sure. Maybe we'll get lucky and it's just a Needle Go. It is just Needle Go, okay. So we have a Hollow One in play. We're ahead on board. Deathrite Shaman is not helping here. Still just hoping to draw a land. A mana producing land. Okay, Soul Guide, that's annoying. So now our Venge Vines aren't going to get in there. A land still gets me the Lotus, and then I can cast the Shaman or the Stitcher. Okay, Revoker, they might just name Bazaar again. They name plus two Mace. That seems silly i don't know why they don't just back up naming bizarre because i could find a force of vigor i guess i would hit both of these but i could hit like sphere and needle once upon a time is not helping okay so, so they're gonna look at my hand this is like needle where it's mana ability so they can't name my black lotus this might be backup bizarre we'll see they name verdant catacombs that's pretty smart okay we didn't draw the catacombs so we're not getting blown out by that 
they did not block and i have to go to discard here or i could just play out my my second bazaar i'm just going to do that yeah, they have an urza saga i would really like to find a mana source and then force of vigor so they're just popping the lantern now can't do anything about that i'm actually a little bit relieved okay no rod that i uh i kind of care because now i can't use my lotus but i don't care too much okay i did find a land and it's the wasteland so now now that i can't play the lotus i can just wasteland their saga i'm gonna attack first see if they block looks like they're going nope they are blocking makes sense i definitely need to wasteland them so they can't make constructs and pass it back just Hopefully they just draw redundant needles and stuff like that. No lodestone golem. Okay, we're getting another turn. I draw the mox. That doesn't help. This hollow one is uh, lethal on this next turn. Now I go to discard here. I'll just discard the once upon a time. Hopefully they just draw another dud. Okay, we got game one. Hollow one coast to coast. So they are the null rod version of shops. They're like the prison shops. So Collector Oofs comes out. The Seiju comes in. The Creature Removal certainly comes in. Alpine Moon can name Workshop. Chalice can stay in, I think. Is this a Death Ray Shaman matchup? Not sure. Blood Gasts are something I can get in under Spears. So I like that. Shaman helps pay for spells under Spear. And Hogak doesn't care how much it costs if I have cards to delve. I'm really looking at Shaman for this matchup. I don't think Grave Hate is doing anything. I definitely want all my Force of Vigors. I'll trim a couple Stitchers and a Hogak. But I do want to keep a reasonable amount of those. Get all these in here. Oh, I didn't need to trim that much because I trimmed the Oofs as well. So I'll keep a bunch of that. And we'll try it like this. So this hand looks pretty good to me. I have the Bazaar. I have a land that will give me a mana source under Spear. Once upon a time can find something, maybe a hollow one again. I'm just going to keep it. I'd like a Force of Vigor, but I can't have everything. Okay, the Spear, I'm going to cast my Once Upon a Time now. There's a land. That land does not cast Stitcher, but having another land... I think is pretty good. There's no Wasteland here, unfortunately, to hit their Telerian Academy. I think it's the mana source in this spot. I want to be able to get... I'm going to use my Besaidu at some point. I can hit their Academy with that. There's a Force of Vigor. Okay, that's pretty awesome. I do need a green card, but we'll get there. I can play the land, play the Emerald, and then just pass, and then untap into having mana. I could also just use Bazaar and see what I get, put my Bloodgast in the graveyard, but I'm kind of interested in getting this mana under me while there's only one spear. I'm gonna do that. This gives me Besaidu mana. Okay, that's a target for Force of Vigor, and no extra tax effects, that's good. Okay, there's a green card. I'm going to play and activate Bazaar, and then on their upkeep, I think I'm going to hit Saga and Jet, and just, let's just play under Sphere. Maybe it'll hurt them. If it's slowing them down, I'm happy. Okay, there's a Rootwalla. So I only need one mana to Vigor, so I can cast a Rootwalla. I want to keep both Besaidus for sure. This is my green card. Maybe it's just the Stitcher in this spot. Lotus can help me cast like hard cast a Vengevine or something in subsequent turns. I currently don't have any black mana to cast the Stitcher anyway. All right, let's cast this using the Emerald and let's stop on their upkeep and let's fire this off on the Saga and the Jet. Let's see what they got. Okay, they have an Inventor's Fair. Okay, they're needling. They're probably going to needle the Bazaar, I had, if I had to guess. Luckily, I have you. Yep. Now, I might not besage you that immediately. I found another Root Walla. So, if I attack and pump, I kind of want to... I also want to besage you their Academy. They can get a basic land if they have one. Imagine if they don't have one, though. I, have, I don't know if these decks play, like, any duels. If I besage you their academy this turn, then next turn I can besage you the needle. You, like, play Lotus, rack it, besage you the needle, activate Bazaar, playing root, and play Rootwalla, something like that. I think I like that play. Let's see if they have a land with a basic land type. They don't. Okay. They have one mana with a spear in play. Maybe they'll miss a land drop here. That would be great. Okay, no, they have a workshop, but they're not 
casting anything. Okay, let's draw. There's a stitcher. I do like that. There's surgical and force of vigors. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so my play now is cast Lotus, crack it for black, a green black for Besaju on the needle, and I'll have two black floating. Activate or cast Stitcher with that. I cannot cast the Root Walla at that point. They might just jam a Null Rod is the only thing. They would have done it last turn, though. So now if I play the Lotus Crack It, I have three mana. I took myself off those other plays. Let's just get the Lotus in. We have, we have an extra mana next turn doing it this way, so I can play both Stitcher and Root Walla. Hopefully no Null Rod. Could be a number of things that would suck here. Okay, Wasteland, that works too. Fun for them. A cage. Okay, that, um, yep, stops Venge Vines from coming in from the graveyard. They're not wasting me immediately. They'll probably do it on my upkeep. Draw. Okay, they let me untap with Bazaar, but they can waste in response to a Besaju. So I'm definitely playing this land. So I could Besaju the cage to get that in play. Stitcher is going to fuel the graveyard, and it could find a Hogak. So I think getting hitting the cage makes sense. I think it's Bayou, no, Badlands, because I'm going to, I can have two Root Walls and I want to be able to pump them both. Hit the Cage with the Bloodgast, and then I'm going to cast the Stitcher. Um, if I find a Hogak, I can Convoke it. Do I want to do that this turn? I think so. Hogak? Nope, that was a hard whiff. I think I'm just going to get the second Root Wall in play. They only have one card in hand. I'm still afraid of like a Lodestone Golem, but we'll see what happens. Stitcher can block and then fuel more graveyard. Okay, they're just passing. I'm attacking for six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, this is a two turn clock. I'll just hold this and just, I want to pump both through Wallace. Two turn clock, like I said. I'm surprised they didn't waste one of my red sources so that I couldn't do this. Now it's too late. Now they're dead to one root wall activation plus either of these other creatures. I think it would have bought them a turn. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. All right, we did it. We got the positive record. So final thoughts, that that league, well, it was okay. Um, Round one, we had an incredible start. We had oof plus a ton of power. It was like the bee's knees, but the opponent just had the bolt and the combo all at once. Not much you can do about that. That's just vintage. They, they just had like the absolute nuts that beats our absolute nuts. Round two, we did it. Round three, I misjudged their deck. They were like four color planeswalkers kind of thing. I thought that they were like a, a bizarre deck, but it turns out they weren't. So I kind of misboarded. I brought in the ley lines and stuff. Would have been a different game if I hadn't done that. And yeah, the other games, we, we beat that hate bears deck and then we just beat shops. Um, Alpine Moon showed up once. We named Wasteland. It, uh, like, I felt good about having that. That was that match where I was misboarded, but it did come up, and I named, I think, the correct thing. I, at that point, I'd realized that it wasn't bizarre. I don't think I want to make any drastic changes to the deck at this point. I am enjoying having more Stitchers. Three Hogak feels like a good amount. I don't really want to go less or more on that. And the extra blood gas feel good. I like the deck as it is and I think the next time I play this deck I'm going to run it back with the same setup. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.